Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with watermelon pizza. That's right, there are two kinds of people in the world. Those that think topping a slice of watermelon with feta and olives is insane. And the people that have actually tried it. And that's because while this does seem kind of crazy, once you taste this amazingly delicious combination, you understand. You understand everything. And you'll probably spend the rest of the summer trying to get that first group of people to give this a try. So good luck with that. And to get started, the first thing we're going to do is cut the largest watermelon we can find in half. And to be specific, we're going to cut it in half lengthwise, which I like to do very slowly and methodically by first making sure my knife is going through the rind right in the center. And then I'll cut down a few inches and turn it and continue slicing. And I will not attempt to go all the way through until I'm sure my cut is nice and straight and my fingers aren't anywhere close to the blade. And then what we'll do once we eventually get that cut in half is that we'll cut those halves in the quarters, at which point we can start creating our wedges. And it should be super obvious, but let me make it official and tell you that you definitely want to use a nice red seedless watermelon for this, since topping a watermelon with seeds with feta and olives would be problematic to say the least. But anyway, once we have that in quarters, we are only going to take the best four or five slices from the center. So I'm going to cut this right in the middle at the thickest point and then make some nice even slices about three quarters of an inch thick. And when it tapers down and becomes too small for your liking, we can just save those to eat as is later. Most likely giving those end pieces to the kids. Since it's been my experience, you have to be of a certain age to really appreciate this approach. And by the way, if you did want to slice all the way to the ends and just serve wedges at variant size, that's up to you. I mean, you guys are after all the lords of your gourds. But since we are calling this pizza, personally, I think it looks a little better if all our slices are about the same size. And then even though this is called a seedless watermelon, we're still always going to have a few of those white immature seeds here and there, which while you could leave, I think we should remove with the tip of a spoon. And as we do that, we're going to be leaving these little divots on the surface, which is a very good thing. In fact, once we transfer these to whatever we're going to serve them on, we should actually take the tip of our spoon and make even more. And what those are going to do is prevent our feta and olives from falling off our slice as we eat it, which is one of the problems with your average slice of watermelon pizza. All right, so this counts as my major innovation. And that's it, once we've dinged our melon, we can go ahead and crumble over our feta. And you know how in all those videos where we use cheese, I will almost always tell you to use whatever cheese you want, and that you're the Jesus of your cheeses, and whatever other variety you like will work fine. Well, I'm not saying that in this video. All right, you have to use feta, since it has the perfect combination of creamy, briny, and salty to pair with our sweet, juicy watermelon. Of course, if where you live there's another kind of cheese that's also creamy, salty, and briny, that's just like feta, only it's called something different, then by all means use that. And then speaking of salty and briny, we will also scatter over some pieces of olive. And I'm using both green and black. Well, actually not black, purple. Okay, those watery, tasteless black olives out of the can are not something I recommend here. And instead you should find a nice, beautiful, pitted purple Kalamata olive, which has that much more intense flavor profile that really is going to work so much better here. And of course, unless you're playing some kind of sadistic practical joke, we don't want any pits, so be careful. And then once our olives are down, we will do a very, very light sprinkling of freshly ground black pepper. Right, just a tiny touch. And yes, of course, you could sneak on some cayenne. But to me, the fragrance of the black pepper works a little bit better. And then next up, we're going to scatter over some freshly and finely sliced mint. Or if you want, basil would also work here. But the mint's a little sweeter, which I think pairs better with this. And by I, I mean Michelle thinks that. But I agree. And then you could serve this as is right now, but I'm gonna finish this up by dressing ever so lightly with just a few drops of rice vinegar or maybe some other sweet vinegar like balsamic. And then last but not least, just a few drops of olive oil for just a touch of richness. And of course it will give that surface a little bit of a sparkle, especially if you're in the sunlight, which while you're eating this would be a great place to be. And that's it. Our watermelon pizza is ready to enjoy. And I'm really kind of hoping you've never had this combination before, so that I'm the one that gets credit for blowing your mind with just how unbelievably delicious this is. I mean, the combination of that sweet, juicy watermelon with the salty brininess of the feta and olives and that sweet, fragrant, herbaceous mint is just absolute perfection. And this always reminds me that when I was a kid, I saw one of the adults sprinkle salt on watermelon. Okay, I don't remember if it was my father or my uncle, but I do remember being shocked as my young, undeveloped brain could not comprehend such a thing. But now that I have an older, undeveloped brain, 
It all makes absolutely perfect sense. I mean, if friends of mine were having a big summer garden party, which they're not, this is something I hope they would be serving. And I'm going to go ahead and sign off and finish those other three. And while I'm doing that, I hope you go out and find these ingredients and give this incredible savory watermelon pizza a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.